Scott. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Um, and I'll just for the recording, I'll restate that we call the meeting to order at 702. Um, this meeting is held under the authority of legislation that authorizes remote meetings until March 31st, 2023. All votes will be taken by roll call. Uh, if you're on Zoom, please ensure your Zoom name accurately identifies uh, who you are. Mute your microphone and uh, use the raise your hand feature um, if you'd like, to, if you're a member of the public and would like to have us call on you. In the event of technical difficulties, it can't, and Zoom becomes available, um, we cannot recover within five minutes, the meeting will be ended, and all matters on the agenda that have not been heard will be automatically continued to our next advisory committee meeting. Um, the minutes for tonight's meeting. Um, hopefully, uh, Richard, are you prepared to take minutes for tonight's meeting? Thank you so much uh, for doing that. Uh, at this time, I will ask committee members to indicate that they are present when I call their name. Um, Adrian Boardman? Present. Uh, Dorcas Miller? You're muted. Dorcas Miller? Present. Thank you. Uh, Richard Fowler? Present. Uh, Deb Adelman? Present. Uh, and Nathaniel Welch is present. So with five members, we have a quorum. Um, our first agenda item is to, um, ah, and I'm gonna pause for one second. Sam Stearns is joining us, so I will uh, include him. Uh, Sam, good evening. Um, we are doing roll call. Um, would you indicate that you're present? Present. Uh, thank you, Sam. Okay. I'm also here too. <laughs> and <laughs> okay. Oh, I sorry you had an assistant there, Adrian. Excellent. Um, <laughs> first agenda item is to approve the minutes from our 10:24 October 24th meeting. Uh, I sent those minutes to all committee members. Um, the draft. Um, are there any edits or? Or, uh, to the minutes that committee members want to make. Okay, may I have a motion to approve the minutes? Oh, someone say something? No, no okay. just letting you know, I realized I signed in with the wrong account, but Marielle Isabella is Tracy Hansen. Oh, so Tracy <laughs> Sorry, Hansen. Sorry, I didn't mean to confuse you. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, Tracy, uh, Tracy, could you just indicate that you are present? I am well, present. I, thank you very much. Okay, so Tracy is also here. Uh, so we have um, seven members now. Um, so can I have a motion to approve the minutes from October 24th? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Thank you. Uh, I'll do a roll call. Uh, Mr. Follender? Aye. Uh, Ms. Adelman? Aye. Ms. Boardman? Aye. Ms. Miller? Aye. Mr. Stearns? Aye. Ms. Hansen? Tracy, you're muted. Ms. Mariel Tracy? Yes. Uh, you vote aye for the minutes? I vote aye, yes. Thank you. And that votes votes aye. The minutes pass by a unanimous roll call vote. Thank you. Uh, moving to our next item on the agenda. Sorry, I have to find my agenda here. Um, we'll get the town update from Marsha Rasmussen. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Nat. Um, Phase 2A and 2D, the update where uh, representatives from the various communities participated in a discussion back in September. Uh, you reviewed the common rules proposed and after and after that review voted to recommend that the uh, go forward with the select board for approval. So uh, the select board has scheduled that for their meeting um, on Monday, November 14th. Wow. And they've requested a representative from the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail Advisory Committee attend that meeting. Uh, I think it's scheduled for 6.45 p.m. So, um, Nat, I don't know if you're planning or want to yep. appoint someone else. Okay. Yeah, I'll cover that in our, in our uh, member discussion. Very good. Um, phase 2B update. We had a site walk on November 1st, uh, noting that the concrete portion has been um, completed. It's not official. There are some punch list items outstanding, but they wanted to have everyone have eyes on what's been done to date so that um, if there is inclement weather or um, any 
um, vandalism done over the winter that they would not be responsible for that. Uh, but the Acton portion is not completed. The final walkthrough will be once everything is done. And they believe that the uh, completion date is going to be extended to May 31st, 2023. Wow, okay. Um, unfortunately, yes. <laughs> Yep. Um, there is a gap in the pavement where um, Jarreau Park was created, um, and I know that Barbara Pike has raised concerns about that with the t with um, Public Works. We're looking at what we can do to either fill that or uh, it's been painted bright orange. There are po um, flags on either side. Uh, that has to do with the, the contract for the Jarreau land uh, recreation area that's being developed. And so it's it's because it's a separate contract, it has to be handled differently. So we can't just go in and, and patch it. Um, the phase 2C updates, um, I have not yet ordered the materials for implementation of the short-term improvements. I'll be doing that next week um, with anticipation, you know, that we anticipate installation in the spring. Um, however, as soon as the planters do arrive, I, I hope to reach out to the various in, uh, stakeholder groups to try to locate them so that we have a sense of where things will be going. Um, then I heard from members of the Community Preservation Committee that they still had some questions after the October 18th presentation. So I'll be putting that together for their meeting next Tuesday, November 15th, but I'm not able to attend that meeting. So it will have to be in writing to them, um, but they asked if there would be a letter of support from the um, for the Junction Park improvements in the Concord Reformatory Cemetery project from your group. So I'm I'm asking if if someone could quickly uh, prepare a, a letter of support for the Community Preservation Committee to be delivered next Tuesday. Do we need Do we need a vote for that, Marcia? You may want to discuss it after I, okay. I give my update. Okay. And we'll add that. that, that. Okay, great. Thank you. If you could add that, that, that would be great. Thank yeah. you. Um, and then the second meeting of the stakeholders interested in the Reformatory Cemetery Project met on Monday. Um, I'm going to be working with the finance department to figure out how we proceed with the design and engineering contract since it's over, um, over the minimum amount um, for th three quotes. So I may need to uh, make Know, get three quote uh, additional quotes for that project, and then for the last half mile, um, they did have the pre-construction meeting. La um, yes, this I guess it was yesterday. I wasn't able to attend. Attend, but um, representatives from GPI, our cons design consultant, were able to attend, and they reported back that the contractor plans to start clearing this winter, but they haven't determined the point of beginning. Yet, um, they've also discussed the chain of communication for submittals and um, how they may or may not affect Concord. So Fuss and O'Neill is the project manager for the Sudbury section, and he will be responsible for channeling information through their, the Mass DOT resident engineer, which will then be sent to Greenman Peterson in the town of Concord. Um, there is a brief discuss discussion about the old Picard Farm Trust uh, owners and their expectations for access to the pond during construction. Um, so I'm going to have to reach out to them to that they designate, you know, one or two people as the source you know, who to communicate with because the resident engineer will be the one responsible for keeping them up to date and hearing their concerns. That he will not be sending it to all all residents, but but to appointees of the trust. And then finally the. Um, the uh, we've finalized the locations and graphics for the consultant and for the design uh, sign company. So there'll, there'll be the wayfinding grant that was awarded to the town of Acton. Um, that is going to um, construction, if you will, and will um, probably be installed if not before the uh, snow flies, then early spring. Um, but the maps are gonna be, prepared with, in consultation with the West Concord Junction Cultural District Committee. Great, thank you. Um, uh, Ms. Katz, I see, your, I see your hand up. If you could hold up, please, for a minute. Dorcas, do you have questions? Yeah, I'd like to know when Gerard Park is going to be available to bikers from the rail trail. I don't have an answer for that. That's not my project. Um, there are some issues with the contractor that the town is currently discussing 
uh, and we're we're trying to figure out what happens next. Um, that's the town manager's office that's that's working on that, and our facilities department. Interesting. Okay. Could could we um, maybe request someone um, in our maybe for our January meeting from the town, who, whoever's seeing that, just come and give us a five minute update on what's happening. I don't know if I can. I, I mean, I can request it. I don't know yeah. if anybody will be available. Okay. Do you want? Would it be helpful if, if one of the co-chairs sent a note to the town manager? Yes. Okay. All right. I'll follow up with you. Uh, Adrian, you and I can follow up and we can just ask someone to come and give us a, a quick update to Dorcas. You can get your answers and we can know what's going on. Okay. Um, other questions from, from members? Uh, I have a couple, which is, um, should we... Um, you're going to talk with the the old Picard Farm Trust folks and find out who the 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 people are. Does the committee need to get involved at all in that? No, I was just going to send a letter to all of the members and say that they need they need to take action. They need to designate two people. It can't be everybody. And right. give me those names, and I will forward them to the resident engineer. Okay, great. Okay, perfect. And I'm, I'm assuming okay. at some point we'll hear from them as the construction starts. Right. Okay. I assume. And then the um, the wayfinding signs, uh, input from the West Concord Junction Cultural District Commission. Mm -hmm. Will um, will or should we get a, a view of the kind of the final draft? Is that something that? If you would like, I can I can certainly ask them to reach out. Okay. They, they, they... have a they have a map that they developed for the cultural district, and so um, they are planning to update it in the spring. And rather than have multiple maps, we decided to go with the, the map that they were preparing. Okay, okay. Okay, that sounds good. And I know that we've had questions about maps of the trail at some point being updated, uh, you know, now that things are being done, but I don't want to conflate the two. Right, um, right. Okay, that sounds good. But I, I think we should, um, maps, but the uh, updated map of the trail is something that we should try to get done before the end of the year. Um, our GIS analyst is going to be retiring at the end of the year <gasps> oh, no. uh, and, and uh, Jill Moonheron. And so um, we might want to ask her to, to provide us with that information. Uh, I just made a note of that. So thank okay. you. Okay. And, and I know that the friends have, a, have an interest, so maybe they could, um, if they have any thoughts or whatever, they could, they could have it, have it, um, you know, have a say. So I'm sure Barbara will have something. Um, so any other questions from the committee regarding Marsh's memo? All right, I, I first saw um, CCATS. Uh, CCATS, could you um, uh, come live and identify yourself? Name and address, please. Hi, Cynthia Katz, 20 Conant Street in West Concord. Um, I, I think Marsha might have answered a couple of the questions that I had, which um, was about when the planters for Junction, my, my, my questions were all revolve around Junction Park. Okay, could we hold on that, uh, Cynthia? We will be okay. covering that in our, in our next session. So thank you, to, if you could hold. Um, and we'll, I'll come back to you. Barbara? Barbara Pike, 118 Border Road. I want to clarify that the community summit also included the phase one towns of Chelmsford and Westford. Um, it wasn't just the phase two towns. And the friends are very interested in getting an extended map for two reasons. First, we're happy to have them printed, you know, that would have phase two B and two C. And also if the committee wants bandanas, we would love to have a map that we could use for for the ground for the ribbon cutting <laughs> sometime. So, sometime in 23. Yeah. Yes. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Barbara. Um, Marcia, thank you very much for uh, and you and your, your staff service to the town. And I'm going to move on now to committee business, uh, which is uh, Junction Park update and discussion. Yeah, one item. I don't know if we want to talk yeah. about it now or later in the meeting, but I yes. think also uh, Marsha mentioned um, tasking someone with doing a letter of support for CPC. Yes, I have that down here as okay. one of the items that to cover, right? 
in this in this flow, but thank you for reminding uh, okay. me. Okay, I just wanted to make sure we didn't lose no, that. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, my co-chair. <laughs> um, so I said, I, uh, per the authorization by the committee in our last meeting, uh, co-chairs drafted um, a letter to the select board regarding our thoughts about um, our thoughts about the um, the planters um, that was delivered to the uh, to Mr. Johnson, the chair of the select board, on Monday, and um, he sent a note back saying that um, he would get it into the calendar. I think it, it, there may be discussion next week, uh, next Monday, uh, but I'm not positive, but I wanted the committee members to have a copy of that. And Marcia, if we could make sure that that letter is also posted on our on our website. Um, I think I, I copied you on it. Oh, okay. Uh, it was on Monday that I sent it out. Um, okay, I'll look. Okay, and I can send you another copy if you'd like. That would be helpful. It would be at the top of the list. I've, I've uh, yeah, I got it. I know you have a, few a lot of I'll, emails I'll, lately. <laughs> I'll copy you and Heather um, so you both have it. Perfect. 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 Um, Thank you. And uh, the second um, item regarding Junction Park uh, is that um, I discovered today um, that the cones uh, that are on the they're being placed behind the cafe are actually being placed by, I think the owner of the cafe because he has concerns about people going by. So I think, I don't think this is an issue we're gonna resolve tonight, but I, I wanted to just report back to the committee that I had a very short conversation with him and suggested that um, we probably need to have further conversations because those cones are potentially a safety hazard. Um, and so the action item is I think to try and find a time when, um, we can have a conversation with him or have him come to one of our meetings. Yes, Richard. Um, it was it would, all right, it would seem as it's an appropriate time to involve the town safety officer officer in this regard. Um, I, I, yeah. I happen to be sitting in at the uh, Disabilities Commission meeting earlier today um, on another matter related to a neighbor of mine. And um, the topic of Junction Park was discussed at that meeting as well and those cones specifically were discussed uh as a safety hazard um for users and the unauthorized uh, the unauthorized placing of them there so yeah. uh, i'm not i i would think that perhaps the appropriate authority in this regard may be the town safety officer right so i i think certainly um they are a key stakeholder I think what I what I'm what I'm thinking is, as we all know, Junction Park um, has some heat to it as a as a topic, and um, I think it would be good to try and get some of the people in the in the room with regard to this. In the end, I I think Marcia, you have to kind of give us some guidance on um, you know what authority we have uh, in in this, and if any, and and what we what we could do. Yours are, are simply recommendations, and so I think it's. I, I think Richard is right that we. It's probably time to involve the um, community safety officer. I, I do know that I had pushback from Public Works on some of the um, proposed the proposed improvements to um, Junction Park. So uh, having everyone in, involved would be really good. Okay. Okay. Um, any thoughts on next steps? I mean, I guess, should we hold a, a meeting of, of our group at a, at a time when, um, you know, we can invite, I, I guess we could invite the, the cafe dude to come say, we're having a meeting on this. Um, I'm not sure where to go with it. I guess I'm coming. Right. Um, right. Um, I, want, I wonder if we involve the safety officer and just mention that this is a safety concern, but it also sounds like it's being done in response to perhaps a different safety concern that the owner of um, yes. the cafe has, and then maybe ask how they normally handle these types of conflicts. I, I would assume this has to pop up in other areas too, right? right? Like two right. different sides, both believing they're doing the right thing based on the concerns they have and 
maybe we can offer to hold a meeting if it's if it's needed, but perhaps it's something that just the two of them can, can, can work, do, right? Can work right. out. Um, Good idea. But I, I don't think we can let people just start to put things on a public right, yeah. right. trail. Um, Correct. <laughs> so I, I think I, I would hate to wait for a meeting to discuss it further. If like in the meantime, maybe there is an, an incident because those cones are blocking the the yep. right of way traffic. Marcia? I would like to volunteer to contact um, both Aaron McClosco and Ron Halsinger to let them know what's going on and ask for their guidance and make a suggestion to them that they reach out to um, the Club Car Cafe and have a conversation. I think that's great. Uh, other member input thoughts? Any thoughts from members of the safety subcommittee? Um, <clears throat> I don't have any specific thoughts except that I've been thinking about this the last two weeks, and it seems like, and sorry, <clears throat> I'll go on camera. I apologize. Um, so it, it almost feels to me that there's somewhat of a fractured tone since the whole Junction Park effort happened, and maybe it's just the timing, but it almost seems like, well, we're going to take matters into our own hands, and we're going to you know, do certain things. And I know they're well-intentioned and I, nobody wants to do something to hurt somebody. But when I take a step back, I think what's missing is really leadership, really the town. And at the end of the day, we all want the right thing. And it may require some significant change, including long-term change on the rail trail. In effect, what, what they're doing you know, through these thing, situations is they're saying, we don't think the rail trail belongs in Junction Park. And you know what, we really don't care what's going on. We're gonna kind of take matters into our own hands. I don't know if they are doing that intentionally, but that is the impact of what they're doing. And they may be right. Uh, my opinion um, is as long as we all keep in mind that we, we have implemented or recommended a terrific short-term solution, but we may need some longer-term solutions. Um, yep. And so my two points are, we need some leadership. I think you guys are on that. And number two, we need to kind of keep our eye on the ball, which is maybe Junction Park just isn't, it's just no longer appropriate for a rail trail. Those are my thoughts. Mm. Okay, thank you. Other, other thoughts or comments? Okay, so um, Marcia, you're gonna, um, did Marcia disappear? Huh, there you are, okay. No, you wait. So, so you'll you'll have a conversation, and we'll wait to hear what happens. Okay, that sounds good. Um, let's see. Uh, I met briefly with uh, just to I'm um, on a report to the committee. I met briefly with Betsy Levinson of the Concord Bridge, who uh, is writing a story about the the short term implementation plan. She'd spoken to Marsha, um, and she just wanted kind of the the. Um, some background, so I gave her a copy of the recommendation and answered some of her questions. And we sat in in the uh, tables near the club car and had a had a wonderful conversation today. I wanted to let the committee know I I uh, had that that conversation. Um, Ms. Katz, you had said you had a couple of questions about uh, Junction Park. Um, do you want to raise them now? Sure. Thank you. Um, I, th I think some of the questions that um, have been filtered through other people um, who were at the select board meeting, I think Marsha answered them. So I'll just um, make sure I heard what I think I heard, which is that the planters have will be ordered next week and that you're going to, Marsha's going to reach out to various stakeholders about um, the process for placing those in the spring once they arrive. Once they arrive, first seeing where they, how they might go. If we, if we don't have snow or if, the, if things are cleared, then we could, we can do a test. But if we have snow and, and so forth, we'll, we'll have to wait till we don't have snow. Right. And, right. and just so, so you're aware, 
uh, Ms. Katz, we uh, voted uh, at our last meeting to, um, while well, we, we, we believe that the plan that has been, been developed by, uh, by Marsha and her staff uh, is, is, is very good. Uh, we had one issue with the planters themselves. And so we've recommended uh, in, a, in a letter to the select board that they remove the planters from the initial implementation of the short term um, and see how the rest of the work and design ideas uh, impact what's going on. And the main reason we did that was that the proposed planters are not in keeping with the committee principles for the short term design. They detract from the aesthetics and they create a potential safety hazard by being in the middle of the pathway. So we sent that we sent that letter um, last week. It will be posted shortly, and we're waiting for the select board to respond to that. So I just wanted to be transparent that um, the committee um, likes everything about the plan, but feels the planters were dropped in um, at the and, and Marcia. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot with that, but the, the planters were kind of pushed by a group that doesn't agree with the approach, and so. We have no power. We just, we just do recommendations and advice, um, and it's up to the select board to make the final decision on that. Yeah, I, I guess I'm not looking at the uh, plan, but without the planters, I don't see how the plan functions. So the plan includes um, the, the the planters we're speaking about are the ones that are in the, put in the middle of the paths. Those there are four of them. There are other planters that help direct people that we we don't have an issue with. There are also planters that that um, create a, uh, a, a, a signifier to people to not cross the tracks by bicycle, but to head, head over. And then there are a couple of things at the entrances on, on either end um, where, where we're signifying to people that they're entering a shared space and that they are accountable for um, uh, the you know, appropriate behaviors as they go into it. So obviously not running over people or if you're, you know, if you're walking, um, being nice to other walkers in the park. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Then in continuing with transparency, I've also submitted a letter to the uh, select board about the wayfaring signage and the hope that the wayfaring signage will not be branded as Bruce Freeman rail trail signage, but rather um, we'll have branding that is about West Concord Junction Cultural District and um, Junction Park. Right. I don't. I don't so, think, Marcia. I don't think we we have any say in the branding. Right? No, the wayfinding is for the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail, and it will have the the dragonfly on on the top. Um, okay. That is what was. Uh, you know that that's specifically for the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail. None of that will appear in Junction Park. It is all uh, there are two two posts. One will be at Jero Park, and one will be uh, just over the bridge, um, over the Neshoba Brook Bridge. So it is on the trail and in the trail. Oh, not on the park, not in the park no. at all. Okay, no, nothing on the park will be with the branding of the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail. And. Have you talked about what the branding will be of that Wayfair? Because we, your, your plan talked about Wayfair, uh, Wayfaring signage at the entrance to the park. That was a, the initial one. And um, if you'll note on the, the second presentation made to the select board, I took that out. Uh, the second, I didn't know there was a second one to the to the select board so there's going to be no wayfaring signage um, there, there will be a park. no there, there's going to be a sign indicating that this is junction park and to slow your pace in this special place right. or something to that effect but there'll be no uh, i think we'll, we will continue to have a sign that says the rail trail goes right or the rail trail goes left um but that's there's no additional wayfinding there the wayfinding is going to be the other two signs, which you're working on with the West Concord Junction Cultural Commission, right? right. Or District Cultural District Commission. And, and with the town of Acton. And with the town of Acton. Okay. Does that have two questions, Ms. Katz? Uh, I, I guess so. Uh, I guess I'll need to find out about that second presentation because I'm not aware there was a second presentation. 
Where could I find that, Marcia? That was the select board's October 3rd meeting. Yeah, that was that was Marcia going back and reporting on what, you know, showing following through on actually carrying out the 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 charge that the select board gave her. That meeting? Yeah. Yeah, you were there. Yeah, we were there and you did talk about wayfaring signage. At I, I said I would Park. be using a, the sign similar to what was proposed for the wayfaring sign, but that it would not have the dragonfly logo on it. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Katz. Okay. Um, so that's, I think, Junction Park. Moving on to the next, any, any other questions from uh, committee members on that? Uh, I, I have one. I, I'll do it because we're at Junction Park. They said I was at the Commission of Disabilities meeting today and Junction Park was also on their agenda. Um, at that meeting, there was a general consensus that the um, planters in the middle of the trail or along the planters were added were, was not a good idea from a safety point of view, from an access point of view. And there was a further discussion among uh, at the meeting that, uh, and from a member of the Green Thumbs herself that uh, the the vast majority of the green thumbs are not do not support these additional planters. That, okay. And there hasn't been a formal green thumb vote for that. Among the, the people uh, was Jennifer Brooke, who's a landscape architect who helped us come up with the plan. She specifically felt that this um, tactical urbanism, this was not a, an appropriate site for that. So I, I basically reinforced what we discussed at our last okay. meeting. That's good. I, I, hopefully she can, um, maybe I should reach out to her and ask if she's going to send something to the select board. Uh, with, I don't, with they didn't really take any action item on that. Okay. Think. All right. Marcia, you raised your I, hand. I was just going to say, um, Jennifer did reach out to me. I was going to share the presentation, the second presentation that I made on October 3rd with her and follow up with some of the questions that she was asking. So um, I'll, I'll know more after I, I talk with her. Okay, well, that's, uh, Richard, I appreciate you spending the time um, and to report out uh, their feelings about the, the planter. So um, I see Terry is here. So Terry, you've heard that. Um, um, I don't know if, if the COD needs to do something official with the, um, with the select board, but I'm, I'm glad that you've had a chance to hear that. You're muted, by the way, Terry. Right. Um, I'm just listening. Um, thanks for the info. I, I don't have any comment right okay, now. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you for coming on. Thank you for being our liaison. Um, um, Matt, I have one question on Junction Park. I, I know yeah. following our last meeting, um, a couple of us were going to look for those um, signs that had been placed in Junction Park that people felt at times were being moved and, and blocking the right of way. And I think, Marsha, you had said you either had or you were tracking down to figure out where those signs had come from. Has that been resolved so we make sure they don't get there? On top? Um, there were four signs that I asked our public, um, our new transportation planner to create, to, uh, to try to get some feedback on the type of sign that we'd want to direct people to get off or get off their bike or to let people know that this was a, a place where they needed to slow down. And we were hoping to test it. Um, so they were located at the entrances, um, but then the signs got moved to be in the middle of the path, uh, both near the club car and in the park itself. And so I moved them out of the way. Um, I have talked to my staff and asked that if not, if they didn't do it today, we'll do it next week. Um, go out, remove the signs entirely. Um, they are sandwich board signs. We use them to publicize different events around town yeah. so that they are trans, they're, they're easily transported. Um, the, although they are a little heavy because they're they, <laughs> so that they don't tip over in the wind. Um, but I think uh, it's become an issue for people taking it upon themselves to uh, relocate the signage. Yeah. So um, that's not appropriate. Okay. Yeah, they were, um, when I was meeting with uh, Betsy, they, the one was placed right in the middle of the of the path next to the Club Car Cafe, essentially blocking all access to the path. So, yeah. um, okay, the messaging, that... the messaging on them is a little contradictory to like the approach that we were taking, which was like not explicitly to tell people they have to dismount, but more to let people know 
like be cautious when you're going through this space. So I just worry about the the shifting of the message and like this early phase. And then once the short-term implementation. As I said, um, we will remove them. Done. So good, thank you. Thank you for the update. Uh, Deb, do you have anything on the safety subcommittee? I had you on here when I thought you were gonna be meeting on Monday, but I know you didn't meet on Monday. Is there anything you'd like to share? Uh, yeah, and I want to acknowledge first, Richard has his hand up. Do you want yes. Richard to go yeah. first? Richard. Um, yeah, the uh, I forgot another point on Junction Park was it was mentioned that there's there was some opportunity for people to vote on wording for the signage. Is that did Never somebody make that. that up? I mean, that came up with oh, the commission disability. Yeah, th there was a QR code and a little, a tiny URL that you could vote on them, but. Um, and were people given, uh, you know, choices of what to say, like what we had suggested? And that that was the four different signs, but I, I, I guess um, Adrian saying that they were not consistent with the direction that the committee wanted to go, so. Well, I, could, I could be misremembering. I just thought that we had circled around on not explicitly telling people to dismount, but more yeah, to I mean, I think that, that shared space. But I could be misremembering. We we have a, a there's a direct conflict here. The green thumbs want everybody to dismount and get off their bike, yeah, that's um, true. and you want to promote people taking responsibility. Um, yes, and so. I think it's a direct you know, conflict. <laughs> yeah, right. This is a direct conflict. Absolutely right. Absolutely yeah. right. So well, we I have, guess, um, you know, and from Marcia, my point Marcia, of view, my point, my point of view that that as a town committee that spent a, a um, is beating a dead horse here, I guess, but spent a, a a large amount of volunteer time among ourselves as well as many other people in the community. Um, if, unless there's some pressing reason that to change what we had done there and the select board can explain why, I, I think that the plan we presented should be implemented. If it's not a good plan, if it doesn't work, then we'll do something else. But yeah. to, to go through the effort in good faith right. on everyone's part, even though we may not agree in the mm -hmm. end, and then just kind of like, well, I guess you could tell them all to get off their bikes after right. all. I mean, I, that to me doesn't, doesn't sit well. Right. So, so Richard, I think that's you. You clearly identified what happened. Marcia, unfortunately, is in the middle and has everybody focusing on her to uh, get their to get their way. So, I want to make sure that um, the green thumbs need. We need to have a conversation with the green thumbs. Um, but part of what we've been doing is following the process we've been given by the select board, um, and in the end. Um, you know, the select board makes the final decision. If they don't like what, what we've proposed, they will do what they need to do. Um, and, and we can deal with that. But I, I think they, except for the planters, um, I think we're, we're getting to the right spot. And I don't know what to do about the green thumbs yet, but, mm -hmm. and it's not all the green thumbs. Mm -hmm. as, as Dorcas has, has pointed out to me, um, there's a variety of opinion of, on the green thumbs. So, yeah. Anyway, Marsha, I, I don't mean to put you in the middle, but you are in the middle. So welcome mm -hmm. to, to, to getting it from all sides. I, um, I just want to say, though, that, I mean, I'm a fan of Marsha not retiring soon. And <laughs> I feel like this is sort of propelling her there. So anything we can do to make her not want to retire, <laughs> we should focus on that. Well, just so saying. so far, the evidence step is it's not working because she's not retiring for a little bit longer now. So... <laughs> So, so who knows? Oh dear. Oh dear. We, <laughs> all right. Um, but I, I do have a couple of things that I'd like to say oh, wait, if I could. Marcia, did, did you want to say I, something? I just, I just want to say uh, Cynthia Katz has her hand up again. Um, okay. Debbie, you wanted to yeah, wait for I, a second? Yeah, I don't know if, if Cynthia's is about what I'm going to talk about or not. So I, I don't know. Okay, you go first and then we'll ask Cynthia. Go ahead. Okay, good. So <clears throat> just as a reminder, at the last meeting of of this committee, as the minutes indicate, um, the uh, was taken forward option two, um, which basically recommends that we will have four large safety um, rules and then four smaller ones. And that will be consistently placed throughout the rail trail. So in the minutes, it's already documented and we'll see what, you know, if, if that is agreed upon by the Concord um, committee. So that, that's good. Um, select board, yes. The select board. Um, 
as we discussed last time, our safety subcommittee met and we had begun that process of drafting principles. What are safety principles? We hedged a little bit. We basically had those. You'll get those at the next meeting. We just haven't met again. So you'll get those soon. And those again are in the minutes for your reading pleasure. In addition, what we'll be doing at our next meeting, since we feel pretty comfortable with the principles, which is really what y'all did with the Junction Park. It was a great way to sort of have something to bounce off of. We'll then address the issue of scope and what, what is the scope, not only of this committee, but to frame it slightly differently. What do we recommend to the planning committee? What, what are the steps that, that, that Concord should take ongoing? And we can discuss ownership in a moment so that we have an ongoing mechanism which reinforces safety. And to be clear, it's not the committee that's going to do most of this, there could be some elements that we'll do. Um, but so some of the things that we'll be talking about are um, as very discreet as, should we make a recommendation that we have a line down the middle of the rail trail through Concord? We'll talk about that. We'll talk about, should our recommendation be a specific speed limit or should it be something else? We're gonna talk about that. We're also gonna talk about just the issue we talked about right now, which is, is there a shift that we need to make in terms of overarching safety governance so that we bring the committees together? We already do a great job of this as evidenced by the other committees that are present, but we still have this issue that we're dealing with where we had certain um, things happen on the rail trail, which created a lack of safety. And so, our question that we'll be grappling with is, do we wanna make a recommendation for the town to revisit who's gonna ultimately own safety considerations? Should it still be that you know we'll own a little piece and others will as well? So I think that's part of our scope to, excuse me, that's part of our agenda is we're gonna say, who owns that? Do we wanna make a recommendation? And consistent with that, maybe a recommendation to revisit budget. One of the things that we've been thinking about is if there's a line item budget, where is it? Who owns it? Um, and is it is it correct? Is it something that is consistent? Which gets us into things like benchmarking. Should the town request that there be a benchmarking analysis? Again, not our commit. We're not going to do it. We're just going to talk about is our scope to recommend these things. And then some of the other things that we talked about, I think, are are consistent with, with what this committee has done in the past, which is, will we make recommendations on what awareness could look like? And in that regard, what are elements that our committee could facilitate versus what the town's gonna have to own? Safety from the principles that we've developed is extremely important. If, if we're going to continue to argue that it's accountability, it's being courteous, it's being conscious of common sense principles, then what we have to do is we have to then uh, bolster that with awareness. And then lastly, the thing that we'll be talking about is, is it in our scope to make recommendations for how we ongoing stay in touch with the rapid change of technology? Um, I think some of us heard uh, in the last two weeks, there've been some very tragic, tragic, sadly, mortal incidents on rail trails involving scooters. Nobody wants that to happen. Nobody wants there to be any accidents, of course. And so we have to, in this environment where technology is changing, you know, literally weekly, ask the question, is it our scope to stay on top? What should the role of the town be? How do we remain relevant so that our principles have a vehicle to bounce against in this rapid changing, rapidly changing environment. So the next meeting will be very important. I can't promise that we'll finish everything, but I do think we'll adopt certainly the principles. I think we'll make progress on the scope. Okay, thank you very much, Deb. Um, looking forward to seeing how we move this forward. Absolutely, thank you. Um, uh, Cynthia Katz, you had your hand up.
Ms. Katz? Yep, sorry. Yeah, it's actually um, her husband, uh, Dan Stapleton, 20 Conant Street. And thank you very much for that, Deborah, and your remarks before. Yeah, that was great. Um, I just want to just say, I'll be really brief here because we're generally real supporters of all everything you guys are doing. But we just, and, and we don't want to constantly seem like we're being contentious about Junction Park. So we just want, really want to kind of be clear about where we're coming from. And, and it isn't about the green thumbs. Um, it's as a citizen of West Concord, and we're not alone in this. You know, we, we know a lot of people that live in West Concord. We're fairly convinced that if Junction Park is used functionally as part of the rail trail with, with people on bikes, it's no longer going to be a park. And it's, it's no longer going to be Junction way. Park. It's no longer, and, you know, that really conflicts with where we're headed in West Concord. We're headed towards walkability. We have three restaurants right there that are promoting out, at least two of them are promoting outside eating. And we wanna see those things continue. And so that's really our fear is that if people don't get off bikes over time, it's just not gonna be a park. And, and that I think that's why we're pushing back here a little bit. And I think this lack of clarity, I mean, the signs have literally said for years, you're supposed to get off your bike. And this committee seems to be taking the position, well, no, you're not supposed to get off your bike. You just have to be careful. But that's not what the, the original agreement said. That's not what the signs say. So that's, you know, that's why we're getting a little testy on our part. We don't want to be because we really want to be on board with you guys because we love what you're doing. I mean, we live right off the trail. We use it a lot ourselves personally, and it's just changed so much about the town. Um, I will note the trail itself is getting dangerous with a lot of people on it, but that's a different issue. Um, I, I nearly got sideswiped last weekend by a biker, but um, but anyway, that's I just wanted to kind of clear the air a little bit there. And I think Deborah's remarks earlier were spot on. You know, it 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 doesn't we don't want it to be like a contentious thing, but that's where we're coming from. Right. But it's not the green thumbs. I can you know I I can tell you there are a lot of residents in West Concord that kind of share this opinion. So we don't have a lot of like that. So, so uh, thank you, Mr. Katz for and Miss and uh, Miss, uh, sorry, Mr. and Mrs. Um, Stapleton. That's okay. Katz. Stapleton and Katz. Stapleton Katz. Thank you. Katz. I feel Stapleton. like Mr. Katz, so it's all good. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mr. Deb Welps. That's that's how I'm known in town. Um, appreciate the input. Um, as Richard indicated, we've you know, and you've been involved in, in all the process and. So this is an ongoing process as, as we do this work and the select board has a final say. So thank you for your input. And we don't look at you as contentious. This is part of the democratic process. Um, and it's complicated, sometimes messy. Um, and I really appreciate the time and effort that everyone's put into it, especially the, the members of this committee who volunteer to do, to do the work. Um, Richard? Um, I'd like to make one comment that is a general comment about the rail trail, and this would be specific to Junction Park, there's no enforcement mechanism to get people off a bike. Right. Okay, right. there's no enforcement mechanism, and that we've, that's been made clear to us by the police department, and it was mentioned at the multi-town committee and other police officers made the same comment. So that's part of the reason why the sense was that a more positive, caring, humane approach could be tried because um we're human we, beings we can't force people off a bike and in fact some people um have said as, as you may have heard that getting off a bike is, is uh, for, for some people is difficult to get back on so well and we, in fact uh, at the commission meeting today um it, it was pointed out that getting on and off a bike could create more of a hazard in some situations than simply carefully staying on your bike. So, so I, don't, I don't have, a, I can, I totally understand the concern. I think we all do. Um, yeah. But my, you know, we, there is no enforcement mechanism. I think that's important to keep in mind. So we're, we're sort of pitting people almost against each other and we're damned if we do, we're damned if we don't right now. And, okay. Yeah. Thank you. 
thank you, Richard. Next item of business is the signage. And um, I included a copy of the letter as, in, uh, as authorized by the, uh, by the committee last, at our last meeting um, that um, in terms of uniform signage, uh, we um, unanimously voted to uh, recommend that the select board approve the posting of uniform rules in the form described as option two from the proposed multi-town meeting uh, group. So um, I've been told uh, that at 645 on Monday, they'd like to have someone from the committee be there. I'm willing to volunteer and represent the committee and would be happy to have other committee members uh, join me. Um, I would essentially repeat what I've said here. They've asked about a potential presentation. I don't think there's much of a presentation other than here's what we did and here's what we recommend. Uh, any thoughts or comments from committee members about that? Okay. Do you expect any conversation given today's discussion or do you think it's pretty straightforward? I think it's pretty straightforward, uh, but I'm more than willing to be schooled <laughs> <laughs> if there's a if there's a curveball, I should be aware of. But I think um, the friends in the multi-town meeting, I talked about it. You guys, uh, you guys, the safety subcommittee um, uh, talked to you know. You guys covered this issue, and I think we have a, a clear direction. Um, I, don't, I don't expect there to be a lot of pushback, but you know, okay, been wrong before. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, next item of business is um, any member questions or comments? Oh, no, wait, hold on. CPC letter. The there CPC, we go. Yeah. CPC letter. Thank you. Uh, so, Marcia, you need a letter uh, from us that says we support. Can you just give me a couple of words on it? The short term improvements to Junction Park project and the Concord Reformatory Cemetery project. Is it, is it MCI Concord or Concord Reformatory? We're calling it Concord Reformatory since Cemetery. it was okay. created when it was the reformatory. Yes, okay. So we're gonna ask them to support the proposals that, that uh, you submitted? You support the, the we, two projects and, 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 and the request for $50,000. Okay, okay. Um, I'd like to make a motion um, that the co-chairs draft a, a letter um, uh, with wording similar to what Marsha just said um, and send it on behalf of the committee to the uh, CPC. May I have a, uh, a second? Second. Any discussion? Okay. Um, I'll take a roll call vote on that. Uh, a, a vote on the motion as submitted, Ms. Adelman? Agreed. Ms. Boardman? Aye. Mr. Follander? Aye. Ms. Hansen? You're muted. Is she still there? She may have taken off. All right, so uh, I'll, She's I'll, here, but she's muted on her phone. Uh, okay, got it. Uh, so I will um, not count her on this. Uh, Ms. Miller? Aye. Um, Mr. Soden? Aye. Uh, I'd like the notes to show that Mr. Soden is present in the in the meeting. Uh, Mr. Stearns? Aye. And Mr. Welch votes aye. Um, we have eight votes, one unknown. Um, uh, so the motion passes. And Marcia, you said that's needed by Tuesday, right? Because that's yes. when your next meeting is okay. Okay. Uh, All I right. apologize so, uh, for the... Ad <laughs> yeah. Adrian, you and I can talk about that tomorrow morning. So we get it out to her. And we, can you, Marcia, can you send me the address I need to mail it to? Certainly, I will. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other, um, any other member business? Okay, any uh, public comments or questions? Ms. Ackerman? Yes, um, a couple of comments um, on the safety, safety subcommittee. Um, I can't, I don't expect there to be any controversy. Um, you never know. 
but um, that was a fantastic meeting um, of the multi-town meeting that uh, Carlene uh, facilitated and there's a lot of common sense in it and, and I think it will go really easily. And um, on the Junction Park, it is a really difficult issue. And I think, um, you know, the select board really appreciates how much time all of you spent on it and how there, there is no right answer, as someone put it. There, you know, damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of a thing. It's a very difficult decision. And Marsha is really kind of stuck in the middle. So I will um, mention it again to Matt, the chairman, um, and report at my liaison report that there are still concerns with this committee and the Commission on Disabilities. I'm not sure it will come up again for debate, but we we don't want to leave the impression that you're not appreciated. Um, we did accept all the other recommendations um, and we very much appreciate all of your time and energy that you put into it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. That was, that was nice. Um, any other public comments? Okay. May I have a motion to... Um, What's it again? Close the meeting? Uh, when's our next meeting? Adjourn. Oh, sorry. What? Could you? When's our next meeting? Oh, our next meeting is December 1st. Thank you. Um, it's at 7 p.m. I believe it'll be a hybrid meeting. Marcia, is that correct? Okay, yeah. hybrid meeting at 141 Kais uh, Road. And we welcome one and all. Um, and so may I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Motion to adjourn. We have a second. Second. Uh, Ms. Adelman? Agreed. Ms. Boardman? Aye. Mr. Follander? Aye. Ms. Miller? Aye. Ms. Soden? Mr. Soden? Aye. Uh, Mr. Stearns? Aye. Uh, Mr. Welch votes aye. Um, I close I adjourn this meeting at 7:59 p.m. Thank you all for your time and I will hope you have a great night and a great weekend.